Well, I can't keep one of these alive in my reef tank, so I'm just gonna have to paint one. As many of you know, I have a reef tank. It's over there. If you're hearing weird sounds in the background, that's what it is. But I have a reef tank here in my office and it is a mixed reef. It is not suitable for a leafy sea dragon, but I love them. So I'm gonna paint one and hang it on my wall in watercolors. And that's kind of the, the, the more interesting thing here because you guys know I, well, some of you know, I have always never been a huge fan of working in watercolor. Yeah, that's completely changed. It's one of my favorite mediums now. I'm in love. Turned out the brand of watercolor you use does make a difference and the paint brushes. If you are a supporter over on Patreon, make sure to head over where you've got the two hour version of this demonstration available for you now. If you're unfamiliar with Patreon for as little as $4 a month, you get instant access to over three, the screen says 200. It's not 200, it's over 300 videos now. As soon as you sign up and a new one every single week, along with a lot of re other rewards, I just released a whole new two set so two whole sets. I can't talk. Grammar is not what my Patreon is for. But two new tiers on Patreon are available now, so make sure to head over and check that out. I've also got my Patreon video library over on my website. Link in the video description if you want to see what lessons are available. For this one, I am working on Arches Hot Press Watercolor. Now, this guy is so detailed, I decided that it would be more of a pain to use masking fluid for all these little details than to just paint around everything. Now, I do want to point out, if I were using ink tents, and the reason I'll bring up ink tents several times in this video is just because a lot of you are used to watching me work in ink tents, and there are some definite differences I want to point out. But if I were working in ink tents, because of the way the ink tents is permanent when it's dry, I wouldn't be able to reactivate and smooth things out that were rough. So if I were doing this in ink tents, I would definitely have gone with the trouble of painting every or masking everything out with masking fluid. But here, because this will reactivate, and you'll see that as we get going, I can soften out all of these harsh lines that I'm going to end up with. If you left it harsh like that in ink tents, it is not going to blend out. It's going to stay harsh. Now that's not to say one way is like ink tents is, is better or less than the other. It's just something that's a difference that you want to be aware of so that you can alter your techniques as needed. I've got a piece of glassine under my hand there to keep the oils from my skin off the work and keep anything from smudging. Really the only thing that would likely smudge much here would be the graphite that I drew everything out in. Now for your graphite lines, when you're working in, whether it be ink tents or watercolor, if you don't want those graphite lines to show through your work, you can use a water soluble graphite pencil so that when you start blending with water, it will just disappear into the pigment. Or if you want those lines to stay, you're afraid you're gonna lose them, use your regular graphite pencil. The really cool thing here, I am not a, an experienced watercolor artist at all, but I can still make pretty paintings. And the reason for that is when it comes to art, your technique is not anywhere near as important as your values, your contrast, your composition. If you can have that down, then your techniques can be sloppy and messy and it's still going to be appealing to the viewer. It's really other watercolor artists who are going to judge me, not somebody who knows very little about art. Someone who knows very little about art's like, oh, that's a cool painting because of the values and the contrast and they like something about it. But it's not as big of a deal for your techniques. I'm not saying you shouldn't learn techniques. What I'm saying is don't be afraid to try a new medium thinking, oh, I'm gonna be starting from scratch. You're not. The things that you know from other mediums, whether it be colored pencils or acrylics, any other medium that you work in, hopefully you've already gotten to a pretty good understanding of values, contrast, composition, all of those things. And that is what's going to make the biggest difference in your work. So don't be afraid to try a medium you're not really familiar with thinking, oh, it's gonna be bad. I'm using absolutely terrible techniques that other watercolor artists, I'm sure, are just cringing watching me do right now. But I love the end result. And in the end, that's really what matters. And it's not that you don't want to learn to control your medium. You absolutely do. You absolutely want to practice more. Just don't let it hold you back from trying something different, from trying a new medium, or even just a new technique in the medium you're currently using. Try different things because it's not as big of a deal that every little brushstroke be perfect as we like to think it is. And I just keep layering on top of layering here. And my end goal is not to have a perfectly smooth background. If I wanted that, I absolutely would have masked off the subject so I could make bigger brushstrokes here without worrying about painting around it. My goal is just to get that paint on there or the pigment on there so that when I come back through, you'll see in a moment, I'm gonna lay this flat and paint water all over everything. Once this, I think it's after this layer. 
and I'm going to let the, the paint just puddle up in different areas. So I have this blotchy look of some areas being really dark and some areas really light where that paint starts to run away. One of the things I'm really enjoying, enjoying, that's not a word, enjoying about watercolor is the way that it does lift. So very, very different than ink tents. And again, that doesn't mean one's better, one's worse or anything like that. It's just a difference in how you will work technique wise. You, they can do different things. And I think that's really cool about watercolor, the way that it does lift off. Initially, I thought that was an aspect I wouldn't like, but the more I play with it, the more that's something that I really do enjoy. You guys know I talk all the time about different mediums and the importance of the supplies and using quality supplies that in within each medium. It really doesn't make a, di a difference in your end result. That is so true with watercolor. I have used and kind of played with watercolor in the past where it was, it was probably like generic uh, Crayola. I was very broke. I couldn't even afford real Crayola paints at the time. So those paints are not going to behave the same way as a good quality watercolor. I'm using Schmincke here. These are amazing. The difference uh, between using the wrong brushes and the wrong paints versus quality materials, it's huge. It really does make the process much, much more enjoyable. I have to wonder how many years that I said I didn't like watercolor and it was really just that I was using terrible supplies. And you would think I of all people would know that given that I talk so often about quality supplies, but I think with the watercolor, it's more important than almost any other medium. It makes such a huge difference, the brushes especially. The brushes with watercolor matter more than any other medium I work in. I can use really damaged brushes and still make it work with acrylics, not so with the watercolor. The type of bristles you're using, the type of the brand of the brush, like all of these things really do play a big role in your success. Now that green I'm using there, it's not okay. That yellow I didn't like, and so I'm going back over it. I'm gonna to tone that down. I'm using white gouache here. So I am not an appropriate watercolor artist. I use techniques that many are cringing at, I know. I think I've already mentioned that. But I'm using a lot of white gouache. And white, what gouache is, it's essentially opaque watercolor. So it's still gonna lift the same, it's still gonna blend the same when it's dry. It's similar, but it doesn't have that translucence that you really want with watercolor. I'm okay with that. I want it to be opaque. I wanted it to cover that up. So white gouache is an absolute must for me at this point when I'm working in watercolor. Maybe I'd hit a point someday where I didn't feel the need for it. Probably not. But that is what you're seeing me go over white with. And I do have the white watercolor, but it's it's much more translucent. It's almost using like using transparent mixing white when we work in acrylics. So that white gouache is a must for me. says every inexperienced watercolor artist ever. The watercolor, just like every other medium I work in, layer until it looks good. You are going to go through some pretty ugly stages. Keep layering and keep cleaning things up. The mistake that I was making when I tried watercolor about 20 years ago, besides the materials I was using, is I wasn't going back through and cleaning things up. And maybe part of that was that I, the paints just didn't have enough pigment to really do that with. But when you're using quality watercolor paints, you can really see how I'm cleaning these edges up and making everything look much, much more crisp. I had always had this vision of watercolor as being this sloppy, messy, really faded pastel look. That's what I had seen done by a lot of, of artists. And it wasn't until I started looking at other artists that worked in watercolor who were doing photorealism where I would have sworn it was an oil painting. You can make it look like any medium you want, but you have to do a lot of layering. So if you like that soft, blurry, fo you know, kind of out of focus, look fine. You can do that with this, but you can, you're not limited to that. This medium seems very, very versatile in any style that you want to paint. It seems to be able to do. And I'm just going to keep layering until it looks good. And it really doesn't start to look good until the very, very end. It is really important with watercolors, start with your light colors and build up to the darks. If you start with your darker areas, while yes, you can lighten them to an extent, it is much, much more work and you may or may not be able to get it as light as what you wanted it to be. So here, if you can just slowly, you can see now I'm coming through and getting these darker values in, that is a much safer way to go than to go too dark and realize, whoops, how do I fix this? You know, just keep cleaning up edges, sharpening things up, working on the contrast. Add some sparkles to those bubbles. 
I love the tiny, tiny detail, how easy it is to get tiny, tiny detail with watercolors. Being that they're so thin, they're really easy to make that liner brush or the script liners work with. And as always, the harder you push with your brush, the thicker that line is going to be. And that's true with any medium. So if you want teeny tiny details, not just it's not just about using a smaller brush, it's also about how much pressure you're applying. Just barely let the tip of those bristles touch the paper where you want those tiny thin lines. And again, coming back through with another layer darkening things up. Notice that I pulled some of those aqua colors from the background into the tail, into the fins of this guy. The photo that I had taken, he was against a black background and his colors were just the purples and mainly yellows. That doesn't work alone in this. I need to make sure that he feels a part of that teal background and I wanted teal so we matched my office. So that's why I've got those aqua colors that I pulled into to his fins to make him feel like he was always a part of that background color. So being that this is painted on paper, I'm actually not gonna hang it right next to my reef tank because things there's splashing that happens over there. So anything that goes in that wall ideally will be an oil or an acrylic painting where the varnish is protecting it pretty well in case it does get a splash. While this is behind a glass frame, I still worry about that. So it's gonna go in another area here in this, this office. Maybe, I, I, maybe back, I don't know. I don't know where it's going yet. I'm really bad at decisions. Have you subscribed yet? If not, I have a handy button right there. It's round, has an orange arrow going towards it. If you click on that, hopefully YouTube will let you know when I have new videos go up. Also make sure you're clicking on that bell notification icon because that's going to be more likely to notify you when I do have new content. I've also got an email newsletter. And if you could share this video with anyone who you think might be interested in it, that would really help me out. Or leave a comment. I like comments. I really like comments. Not all the comments. Leave nice comments, I should specify.